if you don't get the cough surfer right now, you're going to have a problem. This is a video you saw first here on 7 Eyewitness News and has since been picked up nationally. State Supreme Court Justice Mark Rosanti and his wife Maria in a physical fight with neighbors along with Buffalo Police. This all happened back in June and now about a month later, Erie County District Attorney John Flynn decided not to charge Grisanti nor his wife. So that leaves some questioning whether Grisanti's political connections helped him get off the hook. All new this morning, our I-Team Chief Investigator Charlie Specht is digging into those connections and pressing the district attorney on whether or not they played a role in his decision. Much of the country now knows State Supreme Court Justice Mark Rosanti as the shirtless judge. And even District Attorney John Flynn recognizes the absurdity of Grisani's street fight with his neighbors. This is, quite frankly, a bunch of 50 and 60 year old people acting like children, acting like clowns, quite frankly, all right? You need to get the, if you don't get the cough surfer right now, you're gonna have a problem. But neither Buffalo Police nor DA Flynn found any criminality on the part of the judge. Even when Grisanti shoves a police officer who tries to handcuff his wife. Hey! Hey! We're not doing this right now. Hey! We are not doing uh, this right now. No, 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 Wife. That decision has some questioning whether Grisanti's political connections let him off the hook. Specifically his ties to the Ferraletto family, which is active in democratic politics and has ties to D.A. Flynn. State Supreme Court Justice Paula Ferraletto, who is the administrative judge for the 8th Judicial District, fueled some of that speculation when she wrote to Grisanti's neighbor in July defending the judge, saying, while you indicate his status as a judge has somehow benefited him, the opposite appears to be true, as the local news media does not usually cover disputes, nor the district attorney's office make public statements about cases they are not prosecuting. Judge Ferraletto later walked back those comments after 7 Eyewitness News aired this video, but she didn't disclose that her son Joel worked as deputy chief of staff for then state senator Grisanti before serving on the Buffalo Common Council or that her other son, John, works as a prosecutor under D.A. Flynn, or that her family, including her husband, has given tens of thousands of dollars to the Erie County Democratic Committee, which endorsed Flynn when he ran for D.A. Buffalo is a really small community. It's a small political community. A spokesman for the state court system called the connections, quote, coincidental and immaterial. But Rob Galbraith, a senior researcher with the nonprofit Public Accountability Initiative, says political context matters. Judge Grisanti and the Ferraletto family are both part of the same sort of broader political and social network that it's really important context for considering uh, the outcome that uh, the Grisantis saw in this interaction with the police. People, you know, people look at this yeah. and they look at some of the campaign contributions and they say, gee, this looks like a lot of the same people that are involved in politics, go to the same parties and stuff, yeah. and it just smells yeah. kind it's of a small world. Absolutely. fishy. It's a small world. I can tell you this. Uh, again, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't aware of that Paul, uh, a judge for a letter letter, okay? So I, I wasn't aware of that until you mentioned it right now. Um, uh, two, I, I, up until yesterday, I had no idea that Joel Ferraletto used to work in Grisani's office, okay? Um, and, and three, those two really don't affect me at all, okay? The, the third one, though, is in my realm, okay, so I'll address that. I, I can tell you for sure, okay, that John Ferraletto, the ADA in my office, had absolutely nothing to do with this case at all. So did anybody call you and None. make a phone call and not say, look, one. why don't you lay off this guy? He's a friend of ours. Absolutely not. Politics did not, absolutely not Charlie. enter into this absolutely in any not. way. The Absolutely not. Now, our chief investigator, Charlie Specht, is live with us this morning. Charlie, let me ask you a couple of questions here. No criminal charges, but is there any way that Judge Grisanti could face any consequences here as it pertains to the bench? He could, Ed, because we learned for the first time through the reporting of this story definitively that the State uh, Commission on Judicial Conduct is actually investigating Justice Grisanti. Now, that uh, state board uh, can do anything from censure a judge and they would remain on the bench to full removal from the bench. So it's really uh, he could still potentially lose his uh, seat and he does make over $200,000 a year in that job. That's a lot of money. And Charlie, you also mentioned the connections with the Ferralettos. What do they have to say about all of this? 
The Ferrellettos are not talking at this point. We spoke briefly with Councilman uh, Joel Ferrelletto. You can see that in our web story. Uh, the judge, however, or her husband, not speaking publicly anymore. You know, Charlie, a lot of people remembering Mark Grisanti from his time as a state senator. He helped get the same-sex marriage bill passed. But walk us through how he became a judge here. So Justice Grisanti, interestingly, was never actually elected for that judgeship. Uh, if you remember, he was a state senator until 2014 when he lost to Democrat Mark Panapinto. Uh, Governor Cuomo then appointed him to a court, court of claims judgeship uh, in 2015. He then became an acting state Supreme Court uh, justice political, by some as a political favor uh, for Grisanti's key vote as a Republican on making same-sex marriage uh, legal in New York, if you remember, was a huge priority mm. uh, for Governor Cuomo back then. And of course, you mentioned Pena Pinto, who's got his own issues. Charlie, thank you very much. We've been following the story for you since the beginning here, and you can find all of our iTeam reporting on it right now on WKBW.com, right under the iTeam section. All right.